What's up everybody, it's Simon from Lake Hub. I've been camping with a pop-up camper on and off for over 30 years, and today I'm gonna to show you how I set up my pop-up camper, step by step. If you are thinking about getting a camper, or if you just got one, you're still learning how to set it up, then I'm gonna teach you exactly how to do it. Every single step along the way, in the right order, so that you don't mess anything up. And even if you're a pop-up veteran, I bet you're gonna learn a thing or two. Okay, so, I'm still hooked up. I'm not level or anything. I've just got the camper in the spot that I want. The reason why I picked this spot is because you can see the electrical hookups are right over here. We uh, have water right behind us and all the hookups for the camper are always opposite the door. So that's why um, uh, I'm kind of pushed up along that side of the pad. I've got, you know, kind of a black top pad here. <clears throat> it looks more or less level. And you always wanna be off to one side anyway because you wanna maximize as much of that pad for um, kind of porch space, you know, hangout space and stuff, if you have the ability to. We've got a little bit of shade on this side too, so I'm in the right spot. So the first thing we need to do is level the camper before we unhook it. We need to level left and right. We do that by putting stuff under the tires on the one side. It's really simple. So leveling blocks, or um, I built a little ramp, I'll show you that. But before we can level it, we have to get all of our stuff out. So it's time to unlatch, open the door, and get all of our setup gear out, which I keep stored right in front of the door so you don't have to crawl inside. Okay, now we need to check and see if we're level. I keep this simple little device in my door. This is a string level. This is the cheapest, simplest level that they make. It's made for doing masonry work and yard work and so forth where uh, you just have this little hook hanging on a string, right? See if the string's level, it's a string level. It's also flat on the bottom and it makes the perfect little camper level. All you need is a bubble anyway. So you set it on the floorboard not on the roof, you set it on the floorboard because that's the frame. Um, you set it going this way and we wanna make sure it's level left and right. So let's check it out. Just as I thought, this is a level pad. So I don't even need to use my ramps. Now these ramps, this style, I kinda of combined from a couple different styles that I saw online and I, Love this. It's made from uh, two by eights. It's made from two by eights. Uh, actually, just one big long two by eight, cut up in a couple pieces, screw them together, and you put it in front because it's so much easier to go up a ramp forward than it is backwards. So you just go back maybe like a foot or two um, further than you want the camper to end up, put the ramps in front, and then whoop, check it. Whoop, check it again, whoop, if you really need to. I've never had to use that third one, but you know, sometimes you can be camping in a rough spot, so it's possible. Uh, so we're just gonna store that underneath for now, and uh, it's time to drop the camper. So then we're gonna level front and back once we get it all placed. I have that, um, that jack stand right there, the red one. Um, there's different styles of like, you know, jack stands and footings and whatnot. Uh, they have them if you want to use your wheel. They have like a little donut thing that the wheel sits on. This one's been good to me. I like it. It's good enough. Um, you can set it on a cinder block even. Uh, I just, I'd, I like this style. It's really stable. It's worked out for me. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the ramp underneath. And then a trick I learned from a camping neighbor in our last trip to the Rockies is if you have a rug, lay the rug down first and then put your jack stands on the rug to hold the ends of the rug down. 
brilliant. Doesn't get blown away, doesn't get, you know, pushed around out of place, stays in the same spot the whole trip. So that's great. I'm gonna keep my level out because we're gonna to need to level front and back next. So it's time to, it's time to drop the camper. And uh, before I do that, we're gonna chalk the wheels, okay? Chalk the wheels, get my rug out, drop the camper, and then we'll level it front and back. Okay, trailer's dropped. It's not leveled yet, but we are ready to level and then put the jack stands in. My level comes out from that pocket in the door go straight back into the pocket from the door because the last thing you want when you're setting up is trying to dig through all your stuff to get your level. So keep a tiny level, keep it really handy, dedicated use, and I'm telling you the string levels are great. Okay, jack stands are in, they're all stabilized. Now I happen to have two that are built onto the frame and so I have two aftermarket ones, they're fine. Um, all they're really doing is they're putting pressure, kind of taking a little bit of pressure off the suspension, putting pressure on the frame so that you have support on all four corners. And all it really does is it just makes your experience in the camper a lot better. You're not doing any of this. You don't have to have your seat legs. Got some flies. You don't have to have your sea legs because everything's really stable. So it, it just really helps stabilize the camper because they're stabilizers. So jack stand, stabilizer, same thing. So now we know we're level and we're stable. Now it's time to lift. You, do, you don't lift until you're level and stable because that could put more pressure on one corner than the other, which you don't want to strain your lift system. I'm just going to say that. Starting to get a little bit muddy because last time we packed, broke camp in the rain and all my stuff got muddy. Tried to clean it off as best we could, but that's life. So now it's time to lift. I'm going to get the crank ready. And uh, what we're going to do for the lifting is I'm going to do three cranks and I'm going to do a half or a quarter turn back. And the reason why is so that the, the cable doesn't bind up on itself on the winch. So um, that's just a little precaution that you can take. You can just crank and crank and crank and crank and crank. But um, because it's such a critical system to a pop-up camper, I tend to just go cautious and take really good care of it. Keep that cable greased. That will help you out. That'll help uh, keep, from, keep it from fraying and keep it from wearing. 
keep the pulleys on the inside from wearing because all it is is one long cable you know with a couple cables that come off of it and um and a bunch of pulleys and then a big winch in the front so um it's pretty simple you know you just just keep it maintained um keep some grease on that um, you know you can spray it with white grease or something like that or just use like kind of an all-purpose grease keep that keep that cable greasy and then it won't bind on itself as much anyway so if you see me going up and then one back that's why Okay, so you, you saw me holding that green cable. That's your indicator. That tells you that you're at the right height. So when that thing's tight, you don't want to be tight like a guitar string. You just want it to be just barely stretched out straight and you're, you know you're at the right height. We'll probably have to adjust that again. Man, that crack didn't warm me out. We'll probably have to adjust that again when we put the door down, like a little micro adjustment, but that gives us the right idea that we're in the right spot. So now, now it's time to pull the beds out. Every style of camper has its own nuances and you'll learn them over time just by trial and error. Like we found that if once we get the beds all the way out, we get the poles in, we got to give it one last little tug to make sure it's all the way at the end of the track. So that's just something we learned over time. And there'll be things like that. There's always kind of quirks and, and differences between different makes and models and your models and all that kind of stuff. So now I'm going to put in my uh, supports my braces so this is these are my lift braces and these are just a fail safe in case the winch goes out in case the uh in case the cable goes out and it's the middle of the night or something like that you know what happens to that i've talked to somebody who saw it happen once thankfully nobody was inside somebody got hurt but he said it goes whoop like a cartoon so uh that roof will come down fast if there's anybody inside, that could be a major, major problem. So this is a simple device to prevent that from happening in case your lift system fails. Okay, now I'm gonna put the door in. Uh, the door rides on the ceiling and it's on a, on a big hinge on the front. And so um, what I'm going to do is I have a, a big tote full of all of our camping gear and that comes out first just because it's easier to get it out the door before the door's in there. Um, another one of those things I learned with having to rearrange my hands kind of after the fact. So I'm going to drop the door. I need to close the door in order to do that. And then, uh, and then we'll just start getting the canvas. We got to cover up, um, cover up all our posts and then, um, and then get all the canvas around the bottom of the beds ready. So we'll do that. Okay, so before I do the canvas and everything, um, I do want to mention that the doors, sometimes it's helpful. Um, in fact, on my last camper, this was especially helpful, not this one so much, but um, it's helpful when you're, when you're putting the door into 
the bottom of the frame, there's some pegs that go into some holes. It's helpful to unlatch the top, but not the bottom. So keep the bottom door closed, keep the top one unlatched so that you can separate the frame enough to be able to fit them in. Otherwise you'll be frustrated going, okay, I got one in, oh, no. And then I got the other one in and back and forth. So just unlatch the top and then you get those right in, hook up, hook them up and you're off and running. All right, every canvas is different. I've had three different styles. This one's Velcro all the way around and pros and cons of that. Um, yes, the Velcro lasts a long time, but um, this, if the stitching from the Velcro strip starts to pull away from the canvas, it's harder to fix. Um, I've had an elastic system where there was like elastic and like hooks that you just, you just pull and you end up kind of pulling it, pulling the elastic like a belt all the way around and hooking them on hooks and uh, I've had buttons. So um, I don't really have a favorite. It's not really a deal breaker when I'm looking for a camper to buy, but there are different styles. There's different ways of hooking up, up the canvas depending on the make and model. And you'll just learn yours after time. You know, it just takes practice. So now it's time to get the supports on the inside. Um, it's just one, one long pole that's bent, hooks into a bracket on the top, and then pushes the frame bracket, which folds down on a hinge, push that up, and then we're popped out and we're pretty well done on the outside. The rest is like folding the sink up and then, um, you know, turning the, the, the dinette bed and in, back into a dinette and we're all set besides hooking up electrical, hooking up water. So I'll do that. And we're pretty much done. That's all for today. Really hope that was helpful. Get out there, have some fun, go out camping. We'll catch you next time.